as we do. Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing my review for the 100th episode of The Flash, so episode 8 of season 5. We've got so much to talk about, I'm on such a high right now, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos over the mid-season, and also next week for the Elseworlds crossover. So, what an episode. Possibly one of my favourite episodes in seasons, since like season 2 maybe. Like, absolutely nostalgic, incredible, and just well, and just so well put together. This is the one episode in the past few seasons, since the start of season 4, that I've actually been on the edge of my seat wanting more after the episode has finished so like devoe and everyone and even this season i've been really liking this season especially but this ending and the way this episode was actually presented to us really has me wanting more i want to see what happens next it's not like i'm dragging myself to see what happens next they are giving me something they are giving me so much to think about and this episode was just awesome so let's break it down talk about everything that I need to. So, so in the episode, Nora presents the idea to everyone in order to stop Cicada, they should time travel and she adamantly wants to go back in time with Barry. And so this inevitably brings the return of our favorite villains from the past, including new scenes with CGI Savitar. Like I said, there wasn't any like actual shots with Grant Gustin, but they reused lots of scenes and the way they did it in all these scenes throughout the episode was really great. Some scenes were recreated, like the Iris and Barry scene in the hallway was recreated. We get to see different angles and I love what they did. And it's just so bone chilling and amazing to see that Savitar returning like him in the finale as he dies, Nora sees her mum actually kill Savitar, so that was just really amazing seeing Savitar return, and Nora actually outruns a time wraith, and she essentially outruns Barry, so that's a show of how fast she actually is, and I think she's definitely dull dulling it down because she's able to time travel whenever she wants, she has that ability, and the ending suggests she's a lot more trained than we actually know. So we'll get onto that amazing ending in a minute, but let's quickly talk about Zoom. So Zoom returns in this episode, my favorite villain of The Flash. This was just incredible seeing Zoom around. And also we get a new scene with Harry from season two. So that was just incredible. He has just given Barry speed away to Zoom and he is absolutely raging due to him actually not having a way to find his daughter because Zoom still has his daughter and Caitlin gets kidnapped. So we get all of that again from season two. And so they go to these specific time periods. And so we get new scenes with Zoom and it's only short, but it's incredible. So Teddy Sears returns to shoot some new scenes as Zoom with Nora and Barry. And essentially he realizes this is another speedster and he wants her for himself and they have a race. I'm saying it. Zoom has a race with Barry once again and Nora. This is a major freak out moment for me. And essentially as they run through Central City and Barry and Nora begin to time travel, Zoom comes with them and he actually grabs Barry, but then he's pulled off by a time wraith. So what the hell has happened here, right? So we get Zoom and we get to see Hunter actually with his mask down and Zoom actually chasing them. Like, that is just incredible. And him being taken away by a time wraith, how can we explain that? So if Zoom has been taken by a time wraith, most likely he's either dead or he's been taken into the speed force. So is Zoom able to come back? That's absolutely insane. So this version of Zoom most likely is a time remnant. Will we see him again later this season? I sincerely hope so. And this does open up a way for Zoom to actually return in the future because he's aware of Nora now and he's aware that Barry has time traveled and so this opens up that. So I'm really hoping he returns sometime in the future and that was just an oh shit moment like wow. So moving on, another incredible part of the episode, this is when Nora and Barry go even further back to meet Harrison Wells aka Eobard Thorne. At that same time, he returns by time traveling in season 2. And so Eobard Thorne helps fix the device that is broken by Zoom. And as we begin to talk with Eobard in this incredible scene with 
them actually interacting and Eobar begins to guess who this person is, who Nora actually is and he name drops Jesse Chambers and various other speedsters so that's a link to obviously Jesse Quick but also DC Comics and essentially confirming these different speedsters that will be here on Earth in the future in the Arrowverse. And when he actually finds out that Nora is in fact Barry's daughter, he says, you must be Dawn. And this is absolutely mind blowing because if you didn't know, they are adapting Dawn for Nora in the TV show, so she's essentially Dawn, but that's not her name. But could her real name actually be Dawn? Are they misleading us? Is Nora actually misleading everyone to try and get on their side by using Barry's mum's name? And that is just mind blowing. Like the fact that Thorn, in his version of the timeline, Barry has a daughter and he knows her and he knows her name is Dawn Allen. Like, what is going on right here? The timeline that he's from originally is supposed to have Dawn Allen rather than Nora Allen or perhaps she changed her name but that's just incredible. Maybe she has a twin. I'm so excited to talk more about this as we head towards the later part of the season because it's going to be reverse slash heavy and I'm telling you that. In these scenes with Nora and Thorn, there is most definitely a connection. You can feel it. The tension and the weird atmosphere that they create together, especially in the end scene when Thorn actually waves to her, it's rather chilling and this sets up the idea for what happens at the end of the episode and she has an absolute fascination for the reverse flash and she finds out in this episode about some stuff, some really bad stuff, about Barry's mum actually dying at the hands of the reverse flash and this is where we move in to the ending scene and the ending scene is mind-blowing bone chilling and absolutely incredible and I'm just left speechless by this. This is part of the reason why I'm dying to see more of what happens next. This is like the sort of cliffhangers we've been missing over the past few seasons. Like season 4 there was nothing, season 3 had quite a lot but season 2 and season 1 were the best at that and this is an incredible moment. So Nora in fact is revealed to be putting data into Gideon using the Speed Force symbols and it's revealed that she created this language and only speedsters can read it if they know how to do it so Barry obviously can't read it because she created it in the future and he's not around. So Sherlock as he's been suspecting for a long time there is something odd about Nora and this is where we're going to sort of get the reveal later in this back half of the season about Nora to the team that she is not who she says she is because in this message that he's decoded, Nora has written, the timeline is malleable. Malleable being it can be changed and bent but still end up the same way and she's sending this to, in this massive reveal, the reverse flash, Eobard Thorn in the fucking future. No lies, that is incredible. We see her time travel to 2049 to Iron Heights to see a different version of Eobard Thorne played by Tom Kavanagh with blonde hair. This is a jaw dropping moment. When you hear his voice, it just seeps into you and she wants answers. So in this episode, she's found out about what other stuff that Reverse Flash has done in the past and this is seemingly a version of the Reverse Flash. We don't know what version but he's wearing some sort of dampening suit or something like that because he is in prison and I'm guessing the prison is working but he is able to access this data from Gideon on the screen and she is sending him information, very valuable information about the timeline so they are planning something and how the hell has she got in contact with Thorn? That is just mind blowing and this sets up the idea for what's happening later in the season. He is the mastermind of what's going on with Nora. He specifically 100% told her to destroy the satellite, to do this, to do that and he is the puppet master. So is he the main overarching villain of the season? I sincerely hope so. This has me absolutely hooked. I'm gripped. I haven't been this gripped in years like I've been saying and so she is answering to him and yes in this episode she wants answers and she's sending this information from the past. So are they working on getting him out? Are they working on changing something in the past? Or do they want to change something in the future? And how comes it is Tom Kavanagh playing 
Is it a different version? Is it the Crisis on Earth X version that has been put in prison later in the future? There is so many answers and so many questions as to what's happening and let me know in the comments below what are your theories. I will do another video probably sometime in the next few days about this ending because it's just incredible. There is so much to talk about. This cliffhanger was the best thing and so just before that happened Nora time travels and sees Nora and Henry Allen and at first I was rather suspicious and I'm sure most of you guys were but then you see Barry as he follows her and so this should spark an idea in Barry's mind she is powerful enough to time travel as she wishes to any period of time and she's really, really freaking fast. She's faster than she says she is and this should cause suspicion and Yes, it is a really, really nice moment between father and daughter, but is she really the daughter of Barry Allen? Is she really this version of Barry's daughter? Is Barry's real daughter in the future actually Dawn Allen and this is an imposter? This is a different version. There's so many theories that we need to talk about and over the mid-season break, I'm sure we're going to be talking about it all the time because they've left it open in such a great way that we can theorise and we have a rough idea of what's going to be happening. We don't know for certain. And this ending suggests that Eobard Thorne, this future version from 2049, is in fact going to be the main overarching villain. And it seems like Cicada's going to go pretty quickly as we head towards the back half of the season. So in the episode, The Flash fights Cicada and what they do in the past with all that tech that they get from these different time periods from Savitar's suit to Zoom's Speed Force Injector, I forgot what it's called, and then they get the Dark Matter from the Particle Accelerator explosion and they essentially put it in the wall and this is to actually dampen, I believe, the dagger of Cicadas because it's more powerful and it commands it more than Cicada's actual powers inside himself and this actually fails as Cicada recalls the dagger back through space and it lands back to him so this suggests his extreme power and he's the one that got away so they don't catch him but Killer Frost saves them as she is immune to it because she is actually not a messy human she is different and so as we finish up this review I just wanted to talk about some absolutely bone chilling moments some really nostalgic moments for me was when we actually got that flashback montage back in time when the particle accelerator goes off we get to see all these different angles of what's happening and you see Barry get struck by lightning DeVoe gets hit by lightning and all these different events that go on at this very same time also later we get to see the hospital when they do put that device in in the past you can see Eobard Thorne as he's totally fine as he goes into the hospital and pretends to have been damaged and injured by this particle accelerator explosion and also you see a very very knocked out very comatose Barry. So thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed it I had so much to talk about in this review so I'm just absolutely buzzing for the next episode i just want to see more and more and more i'm sure we're going to get a trailer sometime soon for the next episode and hopefully they start to tease out this thorn nora story more with sherlock actually knowing that she has said the timeline is malleable she's sending these messages somehow he knows that something massive is going to go down as we head towards the first part of next season so look forward to that that is going to be incredible this episode was just the best so this was the hundredth episode it was such a great way to look back in the past see all these villains return and also see the different time periods of how the show has progressed so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys later goodbye Sure, I'm free.